Are you suffering from excessive RF over the air rash? Do dropouts and noise make you itch uncontrollably? Does your producer know something is wrong but doesn't want to complain about your limited range? This isn't your fault. You may be one of thousands of other wireless users who are experiencing RF overload. Hi, I'm Dr. Audio and I'm here to help you find the solutions to these common everyday problems found in the entertainment industry. Wireless systems work in an ever busier RF world. Gone are the days of monogamous frequencies that you could use without protection. In today's promiscuous RF environment, you must practice safe RF to protect not only your mix, but your ISO tracks as well. So, how can you do this? Two answers, filtering and attenuation. It is tempting when trying to get a better result to ramp up your RF. Well, it really isn't all about big signal. It's about signal to noise ratio. You want to have your desired signal to be significantly stronger than the interfering sources, but not so strong that it overloads your receiver or distribution front end. Gain. May West once said that too much of a good thing is wonderful. Well, that's not true with RF. In a very busy RF environment, one way to control that gain is to use an LPDA antenna. That's a log periodic dipole array, aka paddle or batwing. It can cover a wide range of frequencies, yet still has a directional pattern so you can reduce the impact of off-axis RF sources. Is that antenna farm on the mountaintop generating a lot of RF energy across the spectrum? Try placing an LPDA so it is pointing away from the farm and directly at talent. Now, an LPDA will passively boost on-axis signals, and that might be a bit too much for your antenna distribution, or it might bring up the noise floor. An adjustable LPDA, like the ALP690 antenna, can attenuate that boost in signal while retaining your signal-to-noise ratio. Another way to improve your lagging signal-to-noise ratio is by getting closer to your antenna. The closer your antenna to the talent, the better your ratio. It comes at a cost. You will have to use longer cables. And signal strength can be lost in the cables. The ALP690 can be set to boost the signal strength while keeping the ratio the same, just enough to make up for cable losses. Manage your gain with an eye on signal-to-noise ratio, not strength. The better the ratio, the better your range. Notice how the signal gets stronger, but the noise stays the same. And remember, antenna gain should always be controlled at the antenna end of the cable, not at the receiver end. What about filters? Antennas aren't very picky. If they pick up RF energy, they will pass it along. The more energy there is, the more energy they gather. And where do they pass all this energy? To the receiver, which must then deal with everything it sees. You can make life easier in the receiver front end by placing filters on the incoming antenna port that narrows the receiving bandwidth. Filters are inexpensive ways to keep out unwanted energy from overwhelming your receiver. They can be found in a range of bandwidths. First, find the frequency that best suits your needs through scanning and frequency coordination. Then, select a filter. The ALP690 has filters integrated, but if you have a broadband antenna, external filters are just as effective. Through proper antenna selection, gain control, and RF filtering, you can survive the hottest RF environment and give your producer satisfaction all day long. This is Dr. Audio signing off and remember, practice safe RF.